Hey guys, this is E with Scrapbooking with Me, and today I'm going to show you how to make this little, um, I don't really know what you call it. Anyway, let me show you how it does, and I'll, it just, it opens up, and you've got all of this space for photos or whatever. I guess you would call it an accordion, maybe, and then it just folds right back up, so you just open it up that way. Folds right back up. Um, we're going to call it an accordion. To me, it looks like one of those accordions that um, people play. So we're going to call it an accordion mini album. And I have seen this on Pinterest, so I'm not the the creator. I know there's other people out there who have made these. So, are, am I the only one that can never tie my bow twice the same? Oh well. So that is it. It's very simple to make, but it's a very good way to use up your scraps. Because if you noticed on the inside of that, a lot of my different, um, let me open it back up and I'll show you. All of these didn't match. All of these are not from the same paper collection, but they're basically the same colors. So it will work because once you put your pictures on there, you're not going to see a lot of that anyway. All right, so what we're going to start out with, and you can use any type base cardstock that you want. I've just got some leftover craft, so that's what I'm going to use. You need three pieces of this in order to make one the size that I did. If you want to make one larger, then just add more pieces of this, of your cardstock. But three pieces of this that are 8 inch by 8 inch. And what you're going to do, let me find my score tool. I can never get everything together at one time, you know that. Uh, okay, we'll just use this one. It's not the one I like, but it's the only one I can find right this minute. Alright, you're going to score at 4 inches. Turn it and score at four inches. So you see, I just scored four inches and four inches. So it scored right in the center. So do all three of them that way. So score at four inches, turn it around 90 degrees, and score at four inches. Do your third one that way. Score at four inches, turn it around and score at four inches. All right, now you need to do a diagonal score line from one point to the other, and it doesn't matter which side you do it on, you just gotta have one. So what I did is, I don't have a diagonal scoreboard, so I just drew a line down the center of on my six. I just put a little pin in there and let it, you know, go dark, let it make a dark line. And then I just line up my two points. I put my one point up here right in the six mark. And then my other point down here in the six. And then I just draw my line from there to there. So you see, that is all you have to do. And if you have a diagonal scoreboard, then it will be a lot easier for you. But it's not hard even doing it this way. Just get in that groove and go. Okay, one more. Do all three of them this way. And you're only doing the diagonal on one side, not on both. So just go from one point to the other. Don't, don't do it on both of them. Okay, so that is all we're going to need to score for right now. So now what you're going to need to do is just fold all of them on the score lines and then fold your diagonal just like that. So when you're finished, you will have something that looks, and you have to manipulate it a little bit. There you go. 
I have something that looks like this. And see, all I did was I took these that had the diagonal on it, and I just folded those in to meet, and then folded that up. Okay, let's do it again. All right, fold on your score lines first. Get those burnished. Fold on your diagonal in the opposite direction. That makes it a little easier. I don't think I did that other one, but it, you know, you can still manipulate it. Then you're going to need to bring these two points in. So just get those two points and bring them in. And then bring these two up. Make sure the little box. And then just give everything a good burnish. So that's two. And turn it over the opposite way. And score on your diagonal line. And then push it down in the middle. Bring those two up to meet each other. Fold it together. And burnish real well. So that is your three inside pages. We will do something else with those in just a minute. Right now we'll lay those aside. And now what you're going to need... It's two pieces of chipboard, and this can be off of cereal box, whatever. It doesn't have to be um, store-bought chipboard. It can be just off of whatever you have at home. Trim that a little bit. These are just two scrap pieces that I had, but they need to be four and a half by four and a half. So four and a half this way, four and a half this way, both of them. And then you're going to need two mats. And each one of these mats need to be five and a half inches by five and a half inches. Five and a half by five and a half. Okay, so I've decided to go with this for my mat. So what I'm going to do is put my chipboard down in the center. And I'm going to use wet glue on this. I'm going to use my glitter glue because I know that it doesn't make the paper buckle. So that's what I'm going to go with. And it holds really, really well. Just set it in the center of that paper. And now you notice that I put my the side that I want to show, I put it down. This is the side I want to show, so I'll put that side down and then I'm gluing this one in the center of that sheet. Just press on it till you think it's glued well. I'll set that one aside. And we'll do this one. So I turn my paper over with my, the side that I'm going to use down. Put my glue on my chipboard. Put a good amount. And if you're using double-sided tape, score tape, whatever, just make sure that you put quite a bit on there because you want this to hold. Then just sit it in the center, just close to the center. You don't have to measure. Just sit it as close to the center as you can. Press it down. I got that one a little bit off, didn't I? I think it will still be okay. Alright, I'll tell you something else that I do to try to keep my cardstock from splitting. I take my wet glue and I go right down the edge beside my cardstock. I mean, beside my chipboard. And I put a little bead of wet glue there. And what that does is it softens that paper up just enough that it gives a bend to it and it keeps it from splitting most of the time. I won't say 100% of the time. Most of the time. So I just kind of let that sit there while I'm doing other stuff. Soak into the paper. And this is what I mean by double folding my corners. I put, take my corner, my paper, and pull it in that way, straight in on my corners. Same on this side, fold it straight in. 
And I can't very well do this one since I already trimmed it, but we'll fix it. So pull that straight in where that your little point is even with your corner. And then take your paper and just kind of gently fold it up. Do it on all sides. Give it a little bit of fold real carefully so that it doesn't crack. And you'll notice that that glue has helped it already be pliable. Once you get it kind of folded up that way, then just press everything down. And then on this side. Neat. Okay, so that is the front, your front pieces. Alright, now this did have glitter on it. When you see that glitter, all I'm going to do is take my... Um, Flint brush and just roll it across there and it gets all of that glitter up. And now what we're going to do before I forget, and my paper is not directional so I don't have to worry about if it's up or down. And I think I might use, I'm not sure which one I want to use. This paper is not exactly pink but I think that will work. I think I'm going to use this one. This one's a little bright for me. So I'm going to go ahead and roll off some ribbon, and I'm probably rolling off way too much, but I'd rather have too much is not enough. And I'm going to put a little piece of score tape right down the middle. Uh, I may put it up at the top. I'm not going to put my ribbon right in the middle. Right across even there. Kind of even. your backing off and then take your ribbon and I'm going to put that on a line where I can kind of halfway get the straight and then just press your ribbon down okay so we do that first before we go any further because if we don't like I said I will forget and now what you need to do is smooth these out a little bit and you're going to put these together on the corners, that, not where the fold is in the center of that corner, not where those di diagonal lines are, but on the solid flat corners, just like that. So you're going to put them together like that, okay? So we're going to put some score tape on the back of these. just want to line these up with those corners where your fold lines, all your fold lines need to be right together. And let's see if I can keep from getting my head in the shot. So just make sure your points in the center are together and then all your fold lines are together. So then you'll have something like this. And then you're going to do the other one. So we're going to put these points together. We're going to put tape on the back of this one. Just remember to steer away, stay away from the ones that have the bend in the middle of them. Make sure it's a solid piece that you put together. Again, line those corners up, line your folds up, and then when you think you've got it, press it down. 
So after you glue those together, and then all you need to do is just fold this up. And if you'll just kind of let it, it'll it'll go in the direction that it needs to. If you have any trouble, then just you know start folding each one, kind of like that, and it'll go like it needs to. And then just burnish again all the corners, all the edges. So after you get that folded up and burnished, then all you need to do is put some score tape right here on the back. And I call this the back. That could be the back, either one. Just put it on one of these panels on the end, I should say. Run score tape all along there. Put a few in the center too because we don't want this to come apart. And you could use a wet glue here, and I think on my other one I did use wet glue that gave me just a little bit of movement time. It doesn't matter if you have a good wet glue that's going to hold, and that is fine. I'm just going to try to do it with score tape this time. We'll see what happens. I may regret it, but we will see. Let's see if I want it to open that way. I think this is going to be... Oh, yeah. So, I'm just going to try my best to center it and try not to get my head in the camera. And if you see, you don't have to cover the inside of these panels because this, this actually covers it for you. Okay, that's going to work. And now you go ahead and put this one on. So we'll put more score tape right here. I may use wet glue on this side just because I may need wiggle room on this side to get everything straight. So we sure don't want the front and the back to be off. I'm going to use quite a bit. Alright, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to put this one down. And then I'm going to lay this one right on top of it. And you see why I needed a little wiggle room? So that's why I didn't need to use score tape on that other side. Because you need to get these, the outside panels, you need to get them even. Got it opening anywhere near like it needs to. Okay, yep, there we go. So now you can stop here and just put your photos on that on this just like it is but I think it's prettier if you cover the insides here again I have used just scrap paper these are just some scraps of paper that I had left over from another project so I am just going to use these some of them are directional but I'm not going to really pay that much attention to it because a lot of this is going to be covered by the photos so let's see. Let's see if I have another one that's anywhere near that. They don't have to match, remember. Because all of mine don't. These four do, but the other ones are different. I mean, they're from different paper lines and everything. Alright, now what we're going to do with these, since they've got the... Um, diagonal line in the center, what we're going to do with these is we're going to cut them right down the center. So I just line them up in my cutting board and just split it right in the middle. I just line my points up.
All right, we have our pieces cut, and I think I forgot to tell you what the size of these are. These are three and three quarters by three and three quarters. That is the inside mats that, that you need. These are three and three quarter by three and three quarter, and then I just split them in the middle. That's all the difference there is. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and lay these out. And I won't make you watch me stick all these down. I'll try to cut some of this out. But see what I'm saying? As long as you've got the same color scheme going, you know, I've got the pinks and the blues, then you're going to be good. So there you go. That is, the you know, you can lay it out any way that you want to, but this is the way I'm going to lay mine out. Now I'm going to glue these down, and like I said, I'm not going to make you watch me glue every one down. But I'll be back as soon as I get all these glued down, or either I will fast forward this. We have all those glued down, and you can see now how pretty that is. And now you just fold it back up, and when you start to fold this the first time after you put all those panels on, it'll give you a little bit of resistance for a little bit, but all you have to do is just make sure that everything goes back in there. And then we'll tie our bow. And you could close this, you know, any other way that you wanted to. You could do a belly band. Um, just whatever. I just decided to put this bow on. This ribbon. Alright. I better use those scissors. And now let's see. We might want to decorate it up a little bit. And put something on there. Alright, so I think I will put this on the back of there. And this is just from one of the paper lines that was on the inside. I had few pieces left. It's just these little cutouts. And I think I'm going to ink the edges on that. And I'm going to use some uh, Victorian velvet. I may even round those corners. Let's see. I think I might want to round it. Yeah, I like that better. Round the corners. Makes it look a little bit more finished. So let's untie our bow. And I think I'm going to put it a little bit off-center like that, and I may even pop it up. I'm not sure. Let's see. Yeah, I think I'm going to pop it up on some pop dots. Because our flower, I'm going to put a flower on there, and it's going to be a little bit dimensional. So this will just help the flower, keep the flower from looking like it's out of place. center. Oh, these things are sticking to me today. I told you everything is going backward. I don't know about you guys, but this has been a Monday on a Tuesday. Alright, so don't it that way or this way. I think I'm going to put it this way, a little bit off-center there, and then I'm going to put this little flower right there, and I'm going to use a lot of hot glue, 
because this has a little point on the back where they put it together that sticks up so I'm just going to fill that in with hot glue to make it have a little bit of dimension and then sit it down right beside that just like that well my bow's not wanting to go the right direction but I do better if I tie bows upside down so I'll tie it upside down in a moment but there is our little kaleidoscope albums and we'll open this one up and let you see so if you pull the tape the ribbon off and open it up there you go put pictures all over that put uh, notes in it whatever you want to do and tie your ribbon back up you've got those ready to go in your purse your bag to give as a gift for Mother's Day just whatever you want to do with them it is absolutely they're so cute and so easy to make I know I made them look really hard but they're not that hard believe me they're not hard at all what I was going to okay. tell you yesterday we have been contacted by a new um, stamp company and they had asked us if we would like to carry some of their stamps and they sent me some samples of their stamps and I absolutely am in love with them this, the quality of the stamps is absolutely wonderful so I wanted to show these to you and see what you think about them. I'd like for you to leave me a comment below and let me know if you think you might be interested in some of these stamps. The name of the company is Joy Claire. Some of you might have heard of them. We're, I think we're only one of maybe five companies that will be carrying their stamps. So I think they're absolutely wonderful. They are a very good quality stamp. Take this out so you can see. They have that nice sweet smell, so the sweet smell lets you know that the stamps are made of a really good photopolymer. Look at that. The dimension, the height, everything is wonderful on these stamps. I will be stamping some of these out and letting you see tomorrow. I'm going to make a few cards and I'll stamp some of them, some of them out. But this one is called Let the Light Shine. This one's called All Things. This one is Letter to God, and then this one is Grow with Faith. And as you can see, they are a faith-based company, so therefore their stamps will have something to do with faith, religion, that type of thing. So I know everyone is not interested in that, but those of you who are, please let me know in the links below if you'd be interested in purchasing these stamps if we start carrying them in the boutique. And, I mean, I think I've already made up my mind. I'm probably going to carry some in the boutique. This is this is just a few of the ones that they have. This is just four. They have tons and tons of them, and they are absolutely beautiful. But um, let me know what you think in the comments below. I will talk to you guys later. Please don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. And we will be back with more tutorials tomorrow. Hopefully, it'll be a little bit better one You'll understand it a little bit more, but I will have all of these measurements on my blog with photos. And if you have any questions at all on how to make something, please just either PM me, email me, or leave a message on this uh, video or on my blog. I will be happy to answer you. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.